Hey guys, so I'm going to be taking you through my MBA admissions process from start to finish. I'll talk about my admission stats, all the schools that I apply to, GMAT, and my best tips if you're going through the process. So if you're considering an MBA or applying to business school, keep watching. So my background, I studied math and econ at UCLA. That was not a double major, but at UCLA, math and economics is just a dual program, and it is a BS. So usually an econ degree is a BA, a math degree is a BS. Um, math econ at UCLA was very quantitative. It was a lot of math classes, like primarily math classes, um, and then a fair amount of econ classes as well, but I would say it skews more math than econ. I graduated with a 3.4. A 3.4 GPA is not high by any means. It's like decent, but it's really not that competitive. And it just goes to show how much other factors come into play besides your undergrad GPA. So I got my undergrad degree from UCLA, but I actually started my undergrad at University of Colorado. And I spent two years there. I took primarily math classes. And that's why when I went into UCLA, I decided to major in math and econ because I had already done a lot of the math prereqs. My GPA at University of Colorado was 3.9. And then I transferred to UCLA to finish out my degree. For work experience, I spent two and a half years working in valuation at KPMG. I also interned there. I did a couple of other internships. I did one internship in investment management at Merrill Lynch and then another internship at KPMG in transfer pricing. And then I ultimately joined KPMG full time as a valuation associate. On the plus side, it was a very quantitative role. We had to do a lot of financial modeling and analysis. But it is also a very common background. Anyone who's done banking or worked in corporate finance or corporate development has done a lot of the same things. So my background and my skill set, my work experience was not unique per se. And MBA admissions committees, ad comms for short, they're definitely looking to build a very diverse class. And so having a unique background is actually to your advantage. I think a lot of people think that they don't have a traditional MBA background and so they can't apply, but that's actually not true. I think if you can demonstrate that you have the quantitative aptitude and an interest in business, I think that your previous work experience does not matter as much as you think. Ultimately, adcoms want to build a diverse class so that everyone in the class can learn from each other. So having a unique background is actually to your advantage. Another thing to play up in your background is any quantitative experience or ability that you have, whether that's taking quantitative coursework, scoring highly on the quant section, on the GMAT or the GRE. The ARCOM just really wants to look for your ability to handle the quantitative nature of MBA classes. Let's talk about the GMAT. For better or worse, the GMAT is still a really critical component of the admissions process, and obviously the higher you score, the better. Also, I think quant performance matters more than verbal. I would say that the GMAT is one of the most important pieces of your application, not only for admissions, but also for a scholarship consideration, fellowship consideration. If you think about it, schools care about their perception and their ranking. And one of the metrics that schools are graded on is the GMAT scores of their incoming class. Um, I'm a dum-dum. I was just watching back the footage when I was editing and I realized I completely forgot to talk about my own scores. So this is what I scored on the GMAT. I got a 750 overall, uh, 47 verbal, 47 quant, a 5 analytical writing, and an 8 integrated reasoning. Those last two scores usually don't really matter that much um, as the verbal and quant. And when it comes to verbal and quant, I would say that schools generally care about your quant more than your verbal. At least American business schools, I don't really know about international business schools as much, but I know for American business schools, they care more about your quant score. However, your verbal score factors more into your overall score. So the overall GMAT score that you end up with, your final GMAT score weights the verbal component more heavily. And I think that the reason why they do that is just to give a slight edge to American applicants because sadly, I think that in general, Americans are just not as good at quantitative, are just not as strong on quant compared to other international applicants. And so in order to kind of offset that fact, 
the GMAT just weighs the verbal portion more heavily. I'm not saying whether that's a good thing or a bad thing or if that's fair or not, that's just fact. Let's talk about extracurriculars. So to my earlier point about adcoms wanting to cultivate a diverse class, I think extracurriculars are a great opportunity for you to play up the unique aspects about yourself. Who are you outside of your academic experience, outside of your professional experience? What do you care about? What are you passionate about? What makes you you? What makes you unique and what can you contribute to your classmates? Always think from this perspective. The adcoms are evaluating you from the perspective of what you can bring to the class, to the classroom experience, to your classmates experience, to classroom discussions. Your essays definitely do matter as well. I would highly suggest that you just take some time to reflect on your life and why you're interested in pursuing an MBA and really put together a very compelling narrative for why you wanna go back to business school and also what you plan to do with your degree. Adcoms really want to help you succeed and they wanna see that an MBA is really gonna provide true value for you. So make sure that you do some real thinking about what you wanna achieve with your MBA and make sure that you can communicate that clearly in your essays. Business schools really wanna see their alums go off and do well. When it came time for me to write my essays, I called a couple of close friends and asked them about what they perceived about me and my dreams and my career path and ambitions. And they helped me get clear on on my self-identity and really helped me craft my essay. If you can find a few people that you trust to read over your essays with you and edit for you, that would be great. I highly recommend. Really take full advantage of the essay section and the extracurriculars to really demonstrate who you are outside of your work experience and outside of your academic experience. Especially if you come from a traditional background, you're going to be up against a lot of candidates who have a really similar background to you. So this is your one opportunity to differentiate yourself from all the other applicants. So with all of that being said, let's go through all the schools that I applied to and how they turned out for me. So I applied to Columbia, Stanford, Harvard, Wharton, Northwestern Kellogg, MIT Sloan, and Berkeley Haas. Harvard, rejected. Stanford, rejected. Columbia, accepted with scholarship. Kellogg, accepted. MIT, interviewed. So I interviewed at MIT, but I'd already gone into Columbia at that point, and I was pretty sure I was going to commit to that. So going into the interview, I hadn't finished preparing the take-home assignment that was for the interview. So that was that. Needless to say, I was not accepted. Berkeley Haas rejected. So that was my entire MBA admissions process journey. Let me know if you want me to dive deeper into any one particular topic. Please subscribe and like if you found this video to be helpful, and I will see you soon. Bye!